angels are not shown mercy that's why Jesus did not die for them you see there are spirits I hope you know that Satan is not the only fallen spirit and Satan in truth is not even the worst of the spirits there are spirits today that are being bound in everlasting chain. Is that in your Bible? Satan is not even one of them. And the Bible says those spirits have been bound for the sake of the elect. I hope you know it was God that designed the lake of fire. Hello? <laughs> the lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. Who designed it? That's where Satan will be thrown into. So who would have designed it? The lake of fire is different from hell. Oh. When you read the book of Revelations, hell itself and death will be relocated into the lake of fire. The Bible says that is the second death. So officially, the judgment of sinners has not begun. It will start officially when Satan joins them in that destruction. Are we Bible students? The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. It is a representation of his justice. It is a representation of his holiness. It remains so through eternity. Satan himself will be taken to the lake of fire. Death as a spirit. The fourth one upon the rider upon the horse that revelation gives. Are we together? The one riding upon the pale horse whose name is death will also be relocated to the lake of fire. Is it not in your Bible? Yes. And all this will be born. Satan has not started his judgment. The Bible says he knows that his time is short. So there is a time allotted for him. It is the reason why you cannot bind all the demon spirits and, and Satan and keep them in one place and stop their motion. You cannot. You can only dispel them within your environment as they interrupt the purposes of God. There is nobody who has the ability to gather all the demons and all the spirits. Not even Jesus did it when he was going to cast out demons he did not bind them to keep them to say you will never move they are given the liberty of mobility you can only sanitize your environment sanitize your life and your atmosphere with respect to birthing the purposes of god but the time is going to come where there will be a clarion call they will be gathered by themselves that was what was adumbrated in the parable of the wheat and the tears is it not in your bible are we bible students Remember the wheat and the tears? The Bible says, while men slept, an enemy came. Am I right? And he sowed tears among the wheat. And when they came and saw it, they found out that something was wrong. And then the farmer said, okay, let us... He said, no, 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 no. Don't do that like that. In doing that, you will not know which one is the wheat and tear. He said, let them grow. When they grow, there is something only the wheat can carry. That the tears will not carry and when it is the time of the harvest you will now gather the wheat and then you will put the tears together and burn them in everlasting fire that's what jesus taught us so you see that there are many things we do as believers that is not from a standpoint of spiritual intelligence you cannot bind the spirits that are around enugu or the east and put them in one place and say in the name of jesus christ from today you don't have access to mobility no every spirit jesus casted out is still in the earth the spirits that oppress men today the bodies that they are oppressing is not the first they have they are used to occupy many many bodies that is why you see satan has an advantage of experience you cannot use experience against him you only use the forces of victory that have been given through Christ. In terms of experience, they have longevity of stay. They have entered and possessed and oppressed and manipulated too many human bodies. You are not the first preacher and you are not the first church to receive an onslaught from Satan. Using experience may be a very weak tool to bring in victory to yourself. Now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph hallelujah are we still together we are discussing that which makes a man usable not just available 
and number one we said the state of your heart ladies and gentlemen let me tell you in your journey in ministry and in your journey in life and destiny you will confront many things that will want to challenge the position of God in your life for instance fame for instance persecution in fact it says what shall separate us from the love of God then it begins to list it there is a concise list I hope you know that both good and bad things can disrupt God's position in your life for instance there are people today who keep saying Lord I love you with all my heart until the day somebody gives you a hundred million cash or one billion the appetite for prayer dies as you are receiving that money immediately because you find out that many of your prayer requests was driven by your need for bread and tea and now the passion to pray and to fast is no longer there how about when God announces you as a man of God and everybody already knows you as a man of God what is the need to study again what is the need to pray again what is the need to fast again after all the nations know you you see that there are many people who leave God in the face of plenty there are many people who leave God in the face of glitz and glamour they leave God in the face of when they evolve to versions of this of themselves that the nation celebrates. you see many of them will leave the things of God so before you begin the journey with God he probes you and says let me walk on you and furnish you to become a vessel unto honor there is a level in life when you grow in terms of increase financial increase or in influence there are certain groups upon the earth that watch the growth of men like a meter when you hit a certain threshold they will come and meet you they will sell you ideas and say join us become part of us and there are privileges you will enjoy if you have not met them they are coming just keep rising i assure you by the god of heaven you know what i'm talking about and you know i'm not lying in every state in every city in every region and in every nation there there are groups of people mandated by the devil whether they know they are used by him or not you keep rising let your company keep rising let your ministry keep rising one day there will be a knock on your door spiritually or physically you will be called into a conversation and they'll say we are proposing to you this now you will understand what the Bible means when it says, what shall it profit a man when he gains? Show me the market where you do that kind of business. That you gain the whole world and lose your soul. If I want to sell my soul now, call the name of the shop for me that I will go. What shop in Enugu receives souls and gives them the world in exchange? Yet the Bible says there is a mysterious marketplace on earth where what you sell is not spare part where what you sell are we together is not clothes the commodity is your very soul and there are men that market is a busy market till tomorrow satan proposed it to jesus he said come the third temptation the first temptation of jesus is the first temptation that every man will go through the temptation of need bread your food turn this stone to bread manipulate ministry to satisfy your hunger manipulate the people that it is within your power to turn stones to bread and by the time hunger is there he will not come when you are full he will come when there is crisis in the ministry he will come when you need to send your children to school and says remember you're a prophet can't you just call some numbers and somebody will come and give you money can't you quote can't you prophesy the account number of the person and receive 10 million why struggle and have to go through the cross when you can just bow to me and have the world now can i tell you we're examining the heart condition of man i hope i'm not wasting your time you must survive that number one temptation there are men who have fallen like a pack of cards because they could not survive it if you are not hungry your temptation will not be about food to eat satan is not stupid he will come to you do you know a spirit called seducing spirits in the bible the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed 
to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons is that in your bible you know how seduction works seduction has no power over you until it unites with a need there has to be a desire in your heart for seduction to work am i right on that if you are looking for a political position chances are excellent that the weapon the devil the seducing spirits will operate in your life with respect to that desperate need so for jesus because he was hungry having fasted 40 days and 40 nights the spirits came the devil came himself and said you are hungry jesus don't tell lies i know you are hungry remember you are the way the truth and the life you are hungry turn this stone to bread turn this stone to bread abuse the use of it manipulate that power to grant your selfish and mundane desires and jesus said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of god second temptation that everybody must survive is the temptation of maintaining your spirituality in the face of greatness the bible says he took him to a holy the top of a holy mountain of the temple and told him fall down there that is the temptation of great men the moment you become great and you are spiritually vibrant the next temptation is be careless with your spiritual life fall down after all it is written he will put his angels charge over you and abuse of grace and mercy they will bear thee up on their wings lest you dash your feet against a stone don't pray you are still anointed go for the conference without preparing even while on stage you are full of revelation something must come for you to preach is it not just to preach and collect your money or honorarium and, and go back that is the temptation of great men so the moment you become great know that your spiritual life is the first point of attack not your church your life he took him to a holy city and said fall down throw yourself down after all he will put his angels charge will the angels watch you go down and not protect you is it not written that he shall put his angels charge over you they shall bear thee up on their wings lest you dash your foot against a stone temptation number three that all men must survive the bible says that satan this one eh satan took him to an exceeding high mountain mountains in scripture talks about spheres of influence he took him there and the bible says he showed him all the glories of the world in a moment the kingdoms of the world matthew 4 says and the glory of them question show me where that mountain is today that you stand upon and you can see the glories of all the world and the kingdoms and here's what he proposed to him verse 9 all these things i will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me southeast herein lies the revelation of what satan really wants he's not interested in your church he's not interested in your money he's not even interested in the child he's not interested in your name or your fame it looks like he's attacking all those things and you may be saying why is satan interested in my marriage why is he interested in my children make no mistakes he's not interested in them this is what he's interested in please give us that scripture that you will fall down and worship me everywhere you see the antichrist system there must be expressions of worship remember nebuchadnezzar 90 feet stature of solid gold and he says after you hear the sound of worship everybody bow down thanks for watching this message and listening to the apostle and i want to encourage you to do everything that you can do to follow this channel and also keep to the word of the lord by that you will reap the fruit